today I'm reviewing the Tatcha Silk Sunscreen SPF 50 with Hyaluronic Acid and Niacinamide. SPF 50 PA++++. There we go. That's the whole name. The Silk Sunscreen. Mineral Broad Sunscreen. Okay. Pick this up. I was nervous picking it up because it's so expensive. I picked it up during the Sephora sale, though. And the fun packaging was kind of like, uh. And I love their last sunscreen. So I had a gazillion reasons to try it. And I'm happy I did. I'm actually wearing it today underneath my uh, Dr. Jar BB cream. So, um, okay. So they call this a liquid radiant finish SPF 50 mineral sunscreen with smoothing silk extracts to protect skin from the sun, hydrate, and visibly even tone skin. So, um, okay. My first criteria is packaging, which initially was what uh, led me to this product because it's so cute. It's very sleekly packaged. However... Uh, it comes to my attention that gazillions of people have uh, complained that the finish on... Actually, mine is starting to crack off now. The finish on the bottle starts to flake off. It starts to flake off the lid. And then when you use it, you end up with little sparkly things all over your face from the packaging. So, it's got sleek packaging. I can't believe there's 1.7 ounces in this little square. But the packaging is going to fall apart and... When you're spending this much money on something, it's ridiculous that the packaging will end up flaking. It's a common complaint with certain types of packaging, especially like the fake silver packaging, which ends up flaking, and then it just is terrible. And once it starts, it's the whole thing will be gone. The, the whole thing will be just an empty purple container. Uh, some people have put tape over it. Some people have put tissues over it to stop it. Some people have contacted Tatcha about it and gotten a free bottle or gotten a backup bottle or gotten a refund. So uh might be worth contacting them. I do notice it's starting to happen right in this corner. So I'm sure next time I go to use it, the whole thing will be a mess. So what started out as the reason for buying it ends up being the reason not to repurchase it. Uh, in terms of denatured drying types of alcohol, it does not contain any of those. It also has no fragrance and no noticeable scent. The manufacturing location for this one is the U.S., which I thought Tatcha typically made all their stuff in Japan. I don't think I've seen anything they've made in the U.S., but anyway, that's what it says right here, made in the U.S. Uh, okay, in terms of the SPF, it's SPF 50 uh, with 10% zinc oxide. I'm a little leery of it, especially... Uh, given the texture of it it doesn't it doesn't make it easy to liberally apply this uh in terms of the uva protection factor um the uva protection factor uh so this one has pa with four pluses after it which indicates great uva protection um i'm trying to find the right sheet sorry so in terms of the UVA protection factor, PA with four pluses indicates above average UVA protection. Although it probably isn't anywhere near the UVA protection of something like, like the La Rose Posay Shaka, which is really high. Uh, UV, uh, PA with four pluses, I think indicates a UVA protection or between like eight and 10, whereas something like the Shaka is like around like 40 or 50, or some of those Bioderma products are 50, 60. So, um, this probably has zinc oxide as a broad spectrum. It protects against UVB and UVA, but it probably cannot come anywhere near to how high some of these chemical sunscreens are. Uh, the filter, this one, I mentioned it, 10% zinc oxide. Uh, zinc oxide, physical inorganic sunscreen. Uh, it's physical, it's a mineral, it's a layer. Uh, it's highly stable, non irritating. It's uh, good skin protectant ingredient as well as a good anti-irritant um so 10 percent zinc oxide in here is going to be a nice mineral sunscreen um i think there are other touches sunscreen i think that one's a chemical and mineral sunscreen uh then i also want to mention it also contains iron oxides in the formula which iron oxides help uh, other filters work a little bit harder and protect against some of the white uh the disc sun as well so Okay, in terms of the white cast, so let's give it a good shake. I notice if I tap it like that, uh, it helps because if I don't, once I open it, it'll be oozing out of the liquid. So 
So the nice thing with this is it's got those iron oxides which give it a nice tint. And when it smooths into skin, there really is no white cast. It's pretty impressive. Uh, I do wonder if certain people with deeper skin tones might notice more of a white cast, but for me, I don't notice any cast. It just gives my skin a nice glow, which I actually really like. Uh, it makes me wonder if they use nano zinc oxide because typically I rarely see a non-nano zinc oxide without a, any white cast. So not sure how they did it, but uh, yeah, it's impressive. In terms of the texture, so it's got a nice liquid texture. It smooths into skin nicely. A lot of people found it was too runny. They didn't like how runny and liquidy it was. Um, they thought it up with kind of with some waste to it. Uh, I didn't. I actually liked the liquid. I thought it made it more enjoyable and easier to smooth into skin. Um, ease of use. So some people found that it pilled with for them. I never had an experience with this pilling at all. And I actually found it really wonderful, easy to smooth over skin, uh, absorbs quickly, gives a glowy finish. It's not super tacky, might be just slightly tacky, but I don't really think so. Um, okay, so let's get on to uh, antioxidants and beneficial ingredients of this one. Okay, so we've, we've got a niacinamide, anti-acne skin brightening, berry repairing. We've got Saccharomyces rice ferment filtrate, which is a skin conditioning ingredient. We've got squalane, antioxidant skin identical ingredient. We've got green tea, antioxidant skin soothing ingredient. We've got Gladosiphon ocamaranus extract, also known as an algae form, which has skin protecting properties. If you notice in a lot of sunscreens, you'll notice a lot of algaes, and algaes typically are found in the water where it's super dark. And they have an ability to soak up UV rays, which can help your sunscreen work harder. Uh, we've got that hydrolyzed silk, uh, which is a skin conditioning as well as hydrating ingredient. We've got visible wool, nice skin soothing ingredient. We've got olantlin, another skin soothing ingredient. We've got vitamin E, antioxidant hydrating ingredient. We've got cocoa seed extract, another good antioxidant. We've got burdock root extract, which is an anti-inflammatory as well as antioxidant. Uh, we've got telosomal, also known as red algae extract, which is a cell communicating ingredient and a, an extract coming from red algae that's rich in milk, sugar, polysaccharide called galactin. Uh, it can stimulate telosomic protein expression and limiting the shortening of telomeres. Telomeres are in your skin. Uh, the older you get, they get shorter and shorter. Somebody says they are like the plastic tips at the end of shoelaces they give a protecting ending to dna strands the problem is that they get shorter and shorter with chromosome replication and after a while they cannot produce the dna strands anymore so dna gets damaged and our cells cannot do their job based on this theory it's believed that limiting the shortening of telomeres can maintain skin cell longevity and delay the aging process uh, we've got sodium hyaluronate which is a humectant we've got lecithin which is a good emollient We've got Kala Sapinoza fruit extract, which is a skin conditioning ingredient. And then finally, we've got Lactobacillus, which is a skin conditioning ingredient. So really nice list of antioxidants, skin soothing ingredients, berry pairing, things like that. They did a great job with it. I'm impressed. Um, okay, in terms of acneogenic ingredients of this one, we've got a few, not terrible, but we do have a few. We've got uh, dimethicone, squalane, vitamin E, and hexylene glycol. So four. So not terrible, but if you're very acne prone, keep that in mind. Uh, in terms of animal testing, this is cruelty free, so no issues with that. Performance. So this one I would call this more of a elegant daily sunscreen as opposed to, hey, I'm going to be outside all day. It's 90 and sunny. Uh, I won't use it on those days, but just on an average day, I might go for a half an hour walk. This is perfect. But if it's super sunny, super hot, sweaty, going to be on the boat, things like that, I wouldn't pick this one. But on a day-to-day -day basis, it's really nice, and it's a sunscreen that I don't dread using. It's really, I think, gives my makes my skin look better than had I not used it any at all. Uh, so that's impressive. Uh, in terms of the price, this is where it all goes downhill. <laughs> of course, 
Full size, 1.7 ounces, 50 millers, and retails for $60. So that's like, what is that, like a dollar ten a milliliter? It's expensive. No, it's like $10. I don't know, whatever. It's expensive for each milliliter, especially with something that you're going to supposed to be applying liberally. It's expensive. Um, so, with a 15 being a perfect score, I gave this one a 12. Uh, we've got issues with the price and the packaging are the two biggest things. And the packaging, when you're spending that much money, I don't want the packaging to become a shiny, sparkly mess that ends up on my face. So, I don't know. I think I can get a refund from Tatcha for it. I don't know. I won't even try because I bought it to review it. But anyway, interesting to hear from you guys if you had a chance to check this one out yet. Uh, and if you have what your thoughts are, so leave a comment. Love hearing from you guys. And stay tuned for more tomorrow. Thank you so much. Bye, guys.